welcome to my channel. Today we are going to make this cute, adorable little bumblebee gnome. And I'm going to show you how I made it, I what how I did his body, the fabric, what I made his wings out of, and how I did his arms. I did his arms a little different, and I actually liked the way I did it. It was really easy, so I will show you how I did that. So let's get started and make this cute little guy. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna do the body like we normally do with our sock. And I have my cardboard piece. On my cardboard piece, and I just cut out a circle just roughly. It's about three inches or so. So we're gonna put that in our sock like we do all of our other gnomes. And this is gonna help our gnome stand up and have a flat surface. And we're gonna put a cup of rice. I get my rice at Walmart in 20 pound bag. I think it's great value for eight, nine dollars for 20 pounds. So it lasts me quite a while. And then we're just gonna stuff it, my stuffing. I also get from Walmart, it's a huge bag. I believe it's 50 ounces and it's 10 bucks. And I will link all the um, supplies and materials that I use in the description box below. So we're gonna stuff it, and that looks pretty good. I'm gonna stuff his head some. And I kind of started not tying off the head until I got um, to where I put the hat on. And then I was able to see if I had to unstuff it or stuff it more. So this is his body. I made his this out of yellow and black fleece. And I bought it from Joann's. And I cut one inch strips and I did quarter inch seam and I sewed it together. I liked it better this way than hot gluing. You can do that if you just have a piece of um, like yellow or whatever. And if you want to hot glue the strips around the body and put the, um, I don't have a piece. If you wanted to put the fabric like I did like this and then glue strips, it's going to get um, with the puckers, it's probably not going to lay nice. So that's why I like to do it this way. It just looks so much nicer. So we're gonna figure out how much we need for his body. I'm just gonna kind of wrap it. And I did this when I sew or cut these, I sewed them so on the stretch side. So make sure you do that. Cause otherwise if you don't, it won't stretch when you put it on. And I'll tell you how long this is. This is a kid's sock. I'm not sure if it's a uh, one to seven size or two to seven. And this is about 11 inches or so. So I cut my strips and I sewed them. I would sew two at a time, a yellow and a black together. Did a whole bunch that way. And then, um, so the two, the two is together. And then we're gonna have to make a bottom. And I'm gonna get it so it's the black down here. So I'm gonna cut this yellow off so that the bottom blends in. So keep that in mind. So I'm just going to, I'm going to do a quick, I actually have to change my thread. Um, so I'm going to take a quick break and change my thread and get us set up over at the machine. And while we're over there, before I change my thread actually, I'll show you how I sewed the wing since we're over there and these are the only two we got to sew. And then his bottom for the base of this. So I took out of a really stiff chipboard and cut my wing into that shape. 
and then I just drew around. This is really, instead of doing it out of paper, this will last you a lot longer. And then I just wrote on there what it was. And I just took a pencil and traced it, and then I'm gonna sew around there. So I'll show you how I did that before I change my thread. What well, doesn't matter. So I'm gonna change it and we'll go over the machine. Okay, so I'm back. So we're gonna sew the wing. So the material that I am using for the wing is like an upholstery fabric. And I got it at Joann's. I think I got it in the remnants. So it was 50% off. Um, I think I got, I don't know if it was a yard or what I got. Um, but I just, I like the color of it. So that's what I decided to use for wings. You could use white fleece if you wanted to or whatever you want to do for your wings. So I'm going to show you, I drew my wing out and I'm going to sew right along on my pencil line. And I'm just using black thread, it's not going to matter. And don't forget to back, um, back stitch at the beginning and the end because when you turn this you want to be able to have that strong enough so you don't rip your seam. I got to you're going to turn the fabric as it's going around. You're going to end up turning it and pulling it with both of your hands and follow that pencil mark. And I know I didn't used to make my patterns and I would just kind of wing it. And then it's like a half an hour later, I'm still trying to get two things the same if it was like shoes or feet or whatever when I was making for my gnomes. So if you just take the time to draw yourself a pattern and it's going to save you a lot of time in the long run and you'll get it both even. So there's our wing and I already have mine cut. So then you would just, these are not my best scissors. So then you're just going to cut your quarter inch seam and when I turned mine right side out, I did not nip around the circle and it was fine, I'll show you. So that's our wing. So we're gonna sew our body and I'm gonna show you how I do the bottom, but I'm gonna sew my side seam first and I'm gonna try to keep my um, stripes together, but I'm not too worried about it because you're not going to see a lot of it, but I'm going to try. And I'm going to probably do a little bit more than a quarter inch seam. And I'm going to back stitch. And if you start going slow with fleece, you have to kind of push it through. Mine is getting stuck in one spot. And it, it um, just doesn't want to grab it or it wants to grab it, it doesn't want to let go of it. So sometimes I will start on, instead of right at the edge, I will start like a quarter inch in. Sometimes you gotta force it through, watch your fingers. And if you have to pull it from the back, you can do that. And if this is too big, then I will just make it a little bit smaller. And then back stitch. And then before we go back to the work table, we're going to try this on our gnome. And we have to sew the bottom on too. So. I'm just going to turn this right side out like that. So our seams are pretty good, not too bad. And then I'm going to try this on and see if it's snug enough or if I want it a little tighter. That's actually pretty good. So now I have a piece already cut out. So if you just want to, because this is I have a hard time with is the um, bottoms when I sew a bottom on like this. So I have this on and I have probably a good quarter inch seam. And I will show you if 
this is too big and this is too small. I'll show you when we're, we're going to pin this on and you're going to turn the right side and have the wrong side out and you're going to find the right side of the fleece. Let me get my sewing machine out of the way and get my needles. And you're just going to line your edges up. And you don't have a seam on here, so it doesn't matter where you start. I like to start at the seam. That's probably not where I'm going to start sewing, but close to it. And I'm going to pin that. And I'm going to take and match. And it might be hard for you to see. Here's my bottom. And here's the, bo the body. And I'm going to pin all this all the way around because I, I don't ever think I have sewed a circle on like this and just not pinned it. It's way too hard to keep in place. So you just kind of match your edges up. And we're going to take a good quarter inch when we sew so that we don't, we got to make sure we catch both the body and then this bottom piece. So I'm just pinning it all the way around. And actually my circle is really good. It's a little, it's not horrible, it's just a titch. So I'm just gonna leave it. Okay, so we have that all pinned and we're gonna make sure we get our seam flat. So it's gonna look like this. So that's our bottom. So this is we're sewing wrong side we're sewing right sides together. I bring my sewing machine back up. And I'm gonna start just ahead of the seam. I'm not gonna go over it. I don't want to start on any place bulky like that. So I kind of lay it flat, and you'll have to adjust it as you go, but I kind of hang on to it like this and then get started. And then don't forget to back stitch. Take a good quarter inch seam. And sometimes it's better to go slower because then you don't have to do it over again. And I will just take and turn this. And you probably can't see because I got my hands in the way. So let me... I'm going to move my camera up so you can maybe see a little better. So I'm just kind of grabbing on, I got a hold of it and I'm just turning it. So when we pin it, we have it nice and flat and I'm not even taking my pins out. And if I need to adjust it. And now we're coming back to the beginning because I got my thread. I'm going to cut it off and then we got it we're going to open our seam so it's flat because that will reduce the bulk probably not going to matter horribly on this kind of thing but on other projects depends on what it is it might so just be mindful you still have your pins in and I hope you got to see enough of that Okay, so I'm going to pause you and we're going to go back over to the work table. So we have our body. Let me get my camera stand out of the way. I don't want to lose my pattern. So we got to take off all of our, take out all our pins. So make sure you get them all. So you don't poke yourself when you turn it inside out. And we're going to cut a little bit of the bulk off that extra seam. So if you're going to make a few of these, what I would do is just so, you know, figure out, because this was, for this size, because I didn't stuff it really plump. Um, 
This was about 11, 11 and a half inches long. And I probably have it long too much this way, but that's okay. So we're gonna turn that out and we're gonna get, the seam is gonna go in the back. I like when I do my gnomes and the sock goes like this, this is gonna be the front. So we're gonna put this on. And if this was a little big, too big, I mean, not if it was, you know, it could be snugger, which is kind of late now. I mean, you could, you'd have to tear your bottom out, but you could just stuff your sock more. So I think I'm gonna cut some of this off here because I don't need all of it up at the top. So instead of doing it with the sock on, I'm gonna take it off. So I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna probably cut it right to about that yellow. Okay, so now we're gonna put it back on. And then for his nose, I did his nose. It's kind of the same type of fabric as the flesh colored. It's stretchy and I get it at Joann's. It's like an athletic material, I think is what it is. So and I'm just trying to adjust the bottom so I don't have it all like the bottom is up on the front when I get it all done and then it's too late to do anything. So there's the bottom. That turned out pretty good. Okay, so let's make his nose. And I do have a video, but I just thought I would show you how I do it. And I even have some black crochet thread. And I gotta find. So I take and I hold it over my hand like this. And then I stuff it in between my finger and my thumb like that and sometimes I end up doing this because I need to adjust it for I don't know what reason but I do I, I don't know why I couldn't I <laughs> just so I can get it stuffed in there and And then you make his nose as big or as small as you want. I like the bigger noses. I think they're a lot cuter. And then you're gonna take, and you're gonna hang on to it all like this. You're gonna make sure you got all those ends in there. And then we're gonna take our thread, and this might be hard to see, but it's just like I do on the other one. I got a long one here, probably more than I need. So I got it like this. I'm gonna take one end, wrap it around, and pull it, and hang on to it. And then you're gonna take your hand and hold it down here so that it doesn't un, so it doesn't get away from you. And then just tie, just tie it. Don't tie a knot yet. And then pull it. Make sure you have strong enough string that. Uh, it isn't gonna break on you when you pull it like that. If you can pull it like this and it breaks, it's not strong enough. You could probably use it if you doubled it. So I've done that with some of mine. And this one I got, this is a lot thicker and I got this at um, Joann's, I believe. Yeah, Joann's. And this was Aunt Lydia's. And I know there's numbers, there's a size on here. Fashion size three. So it's really thick, it was $3.99. So, I mean, this will last a long time for $3.99. So, okay, so I did tie a knot. So now I'm gonna take and I'm gonna pull these up so it's tight, cause I wanna be able to, you can shape it. Um, if you want a, 
a wider nose then you're going to pull more like in the middle which would be the top and the bottom and kind of leave the sides so i think i'll do this nose like that if you want it rounder then you would just pull all the way around your edges so you kind of have to keep looking at it and see if you like it so i'm going to leave mine like that and i'm just going to tie another knot i like my knot to be on what's going to be the top i don't that's just how i do it i think it ties um when i tie it around the body it just um lays nicer in the front so tie a couple and tie one more and we're gonna not gonna cut we're not gonna cut this off we're gonna leave that because we're gonna wrap that around that's gonna help us wrap the nose around the body and i grab it like this so i got my thread back here i know it might be kind of hard to see because everything's black and i'm gonna cut it off just right above the thread okay so don't cut right down to it otherwise and if it looks like it's gonna get it's gonna come undone take needle nose players and you can pull it even if before you tied it if you've seen that I I use these I bet you every day when I craft okay so now we're gonna tie this off so we're going to take our nose, the knots at the top, and I'm going to tie it around his body there. And his seam is not centered. We're going to tie this off now with our nose. And then we will glue, when we put the beard on, we'll glue the knot on the top of the nose too. So get it centered. And it still is not centered in the back for me. It's going to drive me crazy. Because that's how I center my hat, too. Something to be, maybe not be worried about, but for me it is. So then we're going to tie it. We're going to wrap it. I know this is hard when everything's black. And then you're going to... So we got it like this. You're going to wrap it around the front and then bring it to the back again and then pull it. And do not pull on your nose because you will pull the whole thing off and you'll undo your whole nose. I mean, if you have to adjust it a little bit, but don't pull, pull on it. And then we're going to do, I think what somebody told me it was a surgeon's knot, is where I loop it once, twice, three times, and then I pull it. And then I'll do a regular knot. I don't use rubber bands because they can dry out. I cut it a half inch from the knot. And there is our bumblebee gnome. So I'm going to take my needle nose pliers and pull this up just so it doesn't come undone and it's nice and snug and then the body's not too loose and these I actually I think they're like um, jewelry ones because they're smaller so I like those kind I do have a bigger kind too So there's that, and I have his hat, which I sewed the same way, I don't know if you can see, up at an angle. And this piece is 10 inches by about 14. I like to try to make it a little bigger. I can always make his hat smaller. And then you can save this excess fabric because we need to make for his um i don't know what you want to call these because they're not hands so then i'm going to turn this right side out and if you don't have one of these turning sticks i would get one 
It has the angle on the end. I use it every day. Every day when I'm making these, I use it. The end is rounded. And if you can't find one, just take a dowel rod. You gotta have a, a decent size and angle the end and, and sand it and then round the other part and just if you have to sand it, if you have to use like a, um, what am I trying to say, a box cutter and just kind of whittle it so it's almost round and then sand it, you should be able to do it. I'll do it one day and we'll try it and I'll see if I can make one because I use it all the time. So there's his hat and let's see, we're going to try it on, see if I have his head stuff too much. That actually looks pretty good. So I'm going to unstuff it just a little. I want to see what it looks like. Because I'm not sure if I want to scrunch his hat down some. This one I tied up here. Yeah, I think I'm going to unstuff it some. So this is why I stopped tying off my head because I found myself cutting my thread and taking some of the stuffing out after I had tied it before I fit my hat on there. Okay, so that looks good. We're going to leave that. And um, so before we do, we have to do his arms. And then we got feet. Um, his beard, I have his beard. And I have a couple of different sizes. I wanted kind of a smaller one. So I got this. And I got this color. I like this color. So I have that. Okay. So the way I did his arms. And you could use these for other gnomes. And with the black. You probably. You might be able to see it. But if you're looking at it from afar. You probably really can't. I took. And I wrapped, oh, let's see if you can see his arm up close. I took three black, because it's going to, you're going to cover it. So if you don't have black, just use whatever you have, because you're covering it. And then I twist all three of them together, the full length of all three of them. And then his his hands are gonna get. Um, I have those circles, and then we're gonna gather those. We're gonna put a little bit of stuffing. And if you want, which I can't remember if I did it, um, I'm just gonna make this even. And if you don't have a pair of wire cutters, you probably need one of those because I'm gonna do a video on my favorite tools and supplies that I always use. I use these every day. I'm working with flowers, wire, anything. So I'm just going to bend over that end and then just squeeze it together. You could put, if you wanted to put hot glue on there and cover it, And then I'm just going to cut this in half. And we're going to do this. We're going to put this on first before I showed you how I how I covered this. So you're going to take this is this gets a little difficult. And you don't need very much stuffing. And then once we get this on and get it tied, way I this is circle is about Two and a quarter inch diameter and I cut both of them at the same time so if you had your leftover cut them so they're both the same size and then do your seam and I had my ends on the wrong side because then I can tuck it inside and we knot it so make sure that your seam is the same on both so then they'll both be the same size so your ends are going to be on the wrong side of the fabric. And then I just put a little bit of stuffing in there. And then we're going to get his arm in there. 
And this is where it gets difficult because you, I don't want to glue it yet because then if something goes wrong with it, then I have to do a whole arm all over again or cut it off. And I used a white thread and you can't see it. And I'm going to wrap a little ribbon around. But you could make his hands if you wanted to make them black. You could put pom-poms on. You could do them whatever color you want. And I'm going to cut my thread probably about an inch long. Maybe not quite. Just so I can take. And I've started using this. Is a... Um, skewer so I can poke that in there and then I'm going to take some hot glue and put my glue gun in there about every I don't know about three different places and squeeze it and then we're going to let that sit and then we're going to tie ribbon around there okay so we're going to do the same thing to this one A little bit of stuffing if you pull it up and then get your stuffing in there and then make sure you get the right end of the arm and then pull it and don't make sure when you tie it the first time that it's not a knot knot that you're just tying it and then you're pulling it tight this is where you got to have that strong string this um, white crochet thread I believe I got it at Hobby Lobby and they have certain numbers on there too, so. One more. And then leave it a little longer. So then we can tuck that in there and we'll adjust the gathers here. And then we're gonna, if you have to wipe your glue gun off, if you get glue on your tip. So I put it in there and then I just squeeze it. And then we're gonna let that sit. So the way I did his arms is I cut a strip and this is about a half inch wide. And I'm gonna start, I need my, good scissors. I'm going to start, I'm just going to put a little bit of glue right by the hand. I don't know what you want to call it. And then make sure you get the right side. It's hard with this black fabric to know which is the right side and the wrong side. So I just glued it a little bit and then I'm going to glue it right on the edge of that strip of black fleece. So that when I wrap it around, I can catch it. And then I'm going to start going up at an angle. And I think I did a couple, um, did this and I've got enough to go down to the bottom. So it looks like I have a, so I have a thicker arm. And when I'm going back down to the bottom, you can see I'm not overlapping my um, fleece strip. It's right butting up right next to get right next to each other. If you want to, if you don't want to do arms, you don't have to. If you want to do them a different way, you can do them however you want to. And then just put a little glue at the bottom, and then. Put that strip and sometimes if you get a little bit of glue on your fleece you can if you can just trim it without cutting a hole in it you can sometimes get it off so that's how I did his arms so let's do the other one and I'll show you again I got stuff everywhere here.
So we're going to start down by the arm, a little half inch of glue, put that end of that fleece right on there and kind of tap it down so it sticks and then take right on the top side of that and put a little bit of glue just like that and then you're going to wrap that around itself and then you're going to start going up at an angle and this I kind of overlapped a little bit And then if you, when you get up here, I don't think I did it on the other one. You can put a little bit of glue to wrap it. And then we're going to go back down. And then this is where we're not going to overlap. We're just going to wrap it around so it, each one row butts up against the other one. Until we get down to the bottom. And make sure you cut this on the stretch because that will help. So you have to be very mindful of certain things that you're cutting with fleece and if it needs to be on the stretch or not. Um, I did it when I've done my hats and it's like, ah, they won't fit. They won't stretch. Okay, so let's get, we'll do his ribbon. Uh, if I can find my roll of ribbon. And this is how I put my ribbon, most of it, not my huge, huge white stuff. I put it on these clothespins and I wrap it and then I just take and secure it with a pin. And I've got, uh, I don't know, I must have 20 jars up there full. So I'm going to cut a good piece and I'm not going to try to tie a bow, I'm just going to tie a knot. And I'm going to give you a great tip for your ribbon to stop it from fraying. And I use it just about on any project I use ribbon. And I'm just going to cut that. And we'll do the other one. And if you just wanted to make the body, you don't want to do the feet or the arms or whatever, you can just do that. Just do his hat and decorate it. And I have another bumblebee that I'm working on. I was, it's, it's very cute. Um, and I got the most of the video done, but it's the hand sewing of the arms and legs. I'll show it to you. Okay, so what I do, and this is another one of my tools, a lighter. You're going to take a lighter. You don't even have to touch that ribbon. You just have to get the flame close enough, and it will melt it, and then it won't fray. I don't know where I seen this, if I seen it on YouTube or where I seen it, but you can't tell. I mean, if you're doing any projects with ribbon and we know how they fray, um, certain ribbon you might not be able to, like, I think I was doing burlap. No, don't do burlap because you'll light it on fire. <laughs> okay. So let me see if I find my pin here. So remember can glue on his arms and his beard i don't have his beard glued on and then we have his feet we have to do his feet and those i have just about done and if i can find them because i had everything down here in my little container and okay so i got his feet so let's, um, we're going to glue his beard on because I need his beard on first before we put his feet on so I know where to position those. So we're just going to take glue and put it right down 
underneath. And you guys know how I cut my fur. If you've watched my videos, you cut just the backing. I've seen people use the, the X-Acto knife and stuff. I cannot do that. That that doesn't give me enough control or whatever. And you just cut the backing. You do not want to, and I'll use big, you don't want to go like this because you're going to cut all that fringe. So you just get little scissors and just get in there and you can cut the backing. You can just hear it cut. It's so much easier. I think it's so much easier than the X-Acto knife. And then we just take our glue and put this and you're going to lift his nose up and you want those gathers underneath this beard. And then press that and then glue the tabs. So I cut, usually I cut a rectangle piece of fur and then I cut at an angle, and I can't use the big scissors. I just think I'm gonna cut everything off. And then I will cut down at an angle to a point. I like my beards to a point. I don't like the whole beard covering the whole gnome. I like to see the body. And then that's, you can even round that. You can go more to a point. And then you just do your U shape. And you can cut that how bigger, how big it needs to be. And if you had something like this, you could save it if you did a girl gnome. And I've done, um, I did a Mickey and Minnie Mouse gnome. They turned out so cute. And I did hers where I cut a long strip and it actually worked out pretty good. Okay, so let's do, we'll get his arms on. And you want the, the knot on the outside. So this way you can bend it with the um, pipe cleaners. I couldn't get the word out. So find out where you want them. Position them. And I got a little end here that's creeping out. And then find out, I have to look at it here, so I know how long I want his arms. Great, so they meet right in the back. And this is, this is, seam is still off. It's going to drive me crazy. Uh, I hope I can move it. I hate that when something is not right. Okay, so I'm just going to glue right on this. I bent his arm and just put glue right there. So that's why you have to figure out where your arms are going to go and how long, where you want them in the front. And I did find at a rummage sale, and I was going to pull them out, and I, I can't find them. They're little tiny, like little pots. I mean, they're just tiny ones. And I was going to grab one and write honey on it, and I can't find them. It was on like a garland. I got it at a rummage sale. I think I paid, I don't know how many were on there, because it was not that long. There might have been 10 or 12 of them on there, and I got it for $2. So, okay, so there's his arms. And his hat will cover that up. So let's, let's see. And his, we got to do his feelers. And that I did, I twisted three of them together. And then I just cut a little slit in the hat. And then I glued the pom-poms on. If you want to do it, and I'll show you the one I made. She is so cute. Isn't that adorable? I did these little pom-poms the same way I did the hands. So you could do that on the feelers if you wanted yellow. And then I did her feet the same way. Her body is made with the same fabric that I sewed in the strips. And I, um, that's another video. <laughs> um, 
Okay, so we're going to put his hat on. I just got to make sure we got everything on. His wings are going on the outside of the hat. So, and I haven't tied his hat off yet. So if I still wanted to unstuff more of it. See, I got to turn him around. Yep, that looks good. So we're going to take his hat and you're going to flip it up in the back. And then you're going to put your glue on. Don't go right to the edge. I got the little glue gun from um, uh, oh, I can't think of um, Gorilla. And I got the small one at Joann's. And I really like the small one, but it takes it's taken me some getting used to. Okay, and then pull this down before it drips because I'm talking and using hot glue. So I don't put it right to the edge because if you do and you pull it down and it, it creeps up, then you've got hot glue places you don't want it. So I always try to stay away from the edge a little bit when I put the hot glue on. And then I'm going to come to the front and I'm going to glue his nose. I'm going to hold this up. You're going to get all the fur out of the way and I'm just going to put it on the nose right there and then put that down. And sometimes you have to be careful so it doesn't drip down the side of the nose because I did that on one on a small one I made today and I had to take the nose off. I had to rip it apart because I just couldn't cover it up. So now I'm going to go in and do these sides. And I got a little bit of glue on his fur, his beard. So I hope if you guys like my channel that you would click that subscribe button and then hit that bell. And that will notify you each time I upload a new video. If you already have subscribed, thank you for supporting me and joining my crafting community, as I'm calling it. And then push that down. And then we're going to do the other side. So this is, this is the, the way I always do my hats. Start in the back. So there is that, and now we're going to do his feet, and his feet are a circle, and I just kind of guessed about three and a half inch diameter, and I've got one done, and we're going to stuff it. So cut these both at the same time, so then both of your circles are even, the same size, do your same seam, and I'll show you. And I, I know people know how to gather, but this is just how I do it. I don't tie a knot in my end, and it's on the wrong side. And I gotta. And I'm gonna try to come up here and show you how I gather. Is usually I'll have a longer needle than this, but I will take and push my material onto my needle. And then sometimes it gets a little hard to push through. So then I have to put it down on the surface and push it down. Or I've had to use when I've made, um, when I made this little, little sweetheart, I had to use my needle nose players a lot when I had to sew her arms and legs on. I did make one like this. I crocheted it. It turned out so adorable. But I made it for my supervisor at work for another lady that we work with who loves bumblebees and she turned out so adorable. It was a little bit of time consuming. Um, so I thought I'm going to try to make one by sewing it. And I, I think her nose could have been a little smaller, but she turned out pretty cute. But I got a video coming on her. So then you want your 
strings on the wrong side again okay so we can tuck them in and like I said I don't knot them and then we're gonna stuff them I gotta check my camera and this is a longer video than normal so I hope you guys are sticking with me if you like my content hit that like button that really helps my channel to grow I'm just so amazed that I have over 500 subscribers just starting this in January and so I appreciate all of my subscribers everybody that watches my videos thank you so then we're gonna I'm gonna cut this off I have the other one already done So when you pull this, pull it, gathers, then you got to shove that um, stuffing in there. And you're going to have to hold this so this one doesn't get away because you want this one closed. Because we're going to glue it on. So you kind of got to hold it with one finger. This is where you need that strong thread. There goes my girl. I find it hard to get rid of some of these these little guys sometimes when I'm at my craft sales. It's like I I'd have a whole flipping house full of gnomes if I didn't. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave this a little longer so I can poke it in, and then we're gonna glue this on, and we'll do our other one. I know my video is getting a little long. But it maybe when I add, when I edit it, it won't be so bad. Hopefully, so and then when before you um, knot this one, kind of make sure that it's the same size. Because I when I was doing my first one, I had to do a couple of feet and I didn't stuff it. So it looks pretty good. And then I did make a um, beehive, and I can show you that. I had some pots around here, and they would have been perfect, and I couldn't find them. And I couldn't find anything else. And so I had to go, I think it was Friday night, I finally went to the Dollar Tree and bought, I couldn't find anything there either. It was, I bought a pitcher of pouring water out of, a plastic one, and cut the handle and everything off and made the beehive. Mm -hmm. And it actually turned out really pretty. I used a couple different kinds of jute. I put flowers. I painted this with chalk paint and then put the jute around and my ends were at the top. I got little bumblebees from Hobby Lobby and then just added some flowers and stuff on it. So that's the inside. So it was just a picture. And then I just kind of built the top up a little bit um, with a couple layers of the bigger jute. So that turned out really cute. So, okay, so we have his feet. And I'm gonna, I gotta look at this my way be, so that I can see where I'm putting these and try to get his beard out of the way. Cause I want him kinda on either side of the beard. Make sure you have them if, if there's a more pointy side that they're going up. And then you're just gonna glue, don't glue a whole bunch cause it will squeeze out. And then put that on there. And while that one is setting, you can do the other one. And you might have to wipe your glue gun off if you get fur on it. I have had to a lot. Just about every time I'm using it. So 
Okay, we're gonna let that sit and we're gonna do its feelers. So his feelers are three of these together. We're not gonna use the whole length, but I'm just gonna do all three of them together. And I've done some other, I think the bee, bumblebee I did last year, I kind of like glued the strips on or something. And I was trying to do another one that way too. And with the hat and I didn't like it. And then I thought, I'm just going to sew my strips together. So that's what I did. So you're just going to take your ends and fold them over a couple of times so they can get When we put that pom-pom, those um, sharp edges are in that pom-pom. So then you're just going to figure out how long you want his feelers. And we're just going to do a couple slits. And then we'll put the pom-poms on. So leave one end a little longer because you have to fold it over. You can always cut it shorter. But I didn't find any need to glue it when I put it in the hat and I just cut a little slit. I didn't find any need to do that. So there's our feelers and you just figure out where you want them on your hat. Okay, I don't know if down here would look good. I think they're better when they're up further. So you have, this is when you have to have your a decent pair of scissors. So I'm going to do mine right there. So you got to kind of go sideways and don't cut a very big slit. And we're going to put our feelers in before we put our pom-poms on. So my little slit, I'll tell you when I get it cut. And I didn't tie the top of his head off, but I'm not worried about it. So my slit, I ended up, this one got a little bigger. Um, it's about a half inch away, so hopefully it won't rip. And then you get that in there. And this is where your needle nose players come in handy. If I can get it. And then just grab it. And be careful and pull them through. I gotta look at them. I think I want them shorter. So I'm gonna make them a little shorter. And you could use, if you wanted to use yellow pom-poms, the yellow ones I had that I did on here were real tiny ones. Um, so this is the other one I did, and I did it pretty much the same way, everything, except his wings was a, like a butterfly or a dragonfly, probably dragonfly, on a stick at Hobby Lobby, kind of backed by where their cards and stuff like that are and party stuff. Um, but everything is done the same way. And I got his stinger. We got it. And this feet was just pom poms. Um, so I have his stinger. So this is how I sewed it. Was like that. And then I turned it right side out. And then with the tip, and here's a, another trip a tip for when you're sewing and if you have corners and you can't get the corner out without sitting there and jamming something through it take a really strong needle and pull at that corner you can do this if you're doing quilting or whatever but just be careful so you don't pull too much but you can actually pull it out pretty good just by using the needle okay so that's our stinger we got to stuff that but we got to finish up our feelers here and so I have to try to find 
couple of nice pom-poms and you're just going to put find the place that you looks like it's maybe indented and put a little bit of glue you don't need a whole gob and then you're just going to take and put that right on the tip and push it down so you're kind of pushing the tip of this um, pipe cleaner into the pom-pom so that's why if you find a nice round one so i don't have much glue on there and then just put that tip and press it down. I have a little bit of my pipe cleaner that's kind of sticking up or out and I don't like it. But if I turn it to the back you won't see it. And if you wanted to put a little bit of glue in there, you can, but, okay, so, oh, we got his wings. This is a long video, you guys. I don't know how long I am right now. We're at almost an hour. <laughs> okay. So, um, with these, and I was going to sew them, um, and this I actually took my lighter to. And I'm going to sew these really quick across here, all four of them. Um, so that's how we sewed them. And then I turned them inside out. I'm not going to stuff these. And where's my... I lost my, my little... My favorite turning tool. So I just run that on the inside to get the edges all rounded. And I got four wings. You could just do two if you wanted. And I'm gonna make sure I got the same kind of wing. For the bottom and the top. So I liked this upholstery fabric. I just thought it was really pretty and kind of shimmery so I'm making sure these are the two both pairs are the same and then I'm just going to do a quick stitch over here and then I'll be right back just give me now I could have done this in a white thread and I had already changed threads and I didn't want to go ahead and do it and I'm not too worried about the black so I'm going to take my lighter, and I already tried it on some on my other one. It's just light that end, and it'll kind of melt it so it doesn't fray. And I can even probably cut some of this off a little more. So you're just going to run your lighter and then we're just going to glue these on. You're going to have two on the top and I got to get, you have to look from the front to see where they are and I have them kind of on right alongside of the hat, that seam in the hat, okay, and his seam is off a little bit and his Oh. the seam in the back and the seam in the hat and the front of the face <laughs> but you know I'm probably the only one that's going to notice so so just take and put some glue on these and like I said you're going to want to make sure you know I kind of angle one is going to be up one set's going to be up but you got to have them out far enough so you can see them too. So that's the other thing. So yeah, those are off and that's driving me crazy. I don't like that. 
I would probably not sell this one because of that. But <clears throat> then I'm going to do the other two and I'm going to kind of do those over the first ones like that. Okay. I guess so far the only thing I don't like about the big glue gun, Gorilla Glue, the Gorilla Gun, is that it takes a little bit to get the glue to come out. So those are going to go down. And you want to hurry up and look at them. And make sure they're the way you want it. And I guess if you wanted, I don't know if I will, if that would ever make a difference, is if you wanted to cover up that back like that, you could do that. I might do that just if I keep it for myself. And then we're just going to tie a little bit of jute on the hat and put a couple of bumblebees on. And we're done. So you see, I'm going to tie this down a little further. And my bumblebees. So these were Soology. So if you look, they do have that under $2.99. They do have their Soology usually 50% off. Not all the time. And I gotta see. I'm just gonna put that right there. So if you guys like my channel, I would love for you to hit the subscribe button and click on that bell. And that will notify you each time I upload a new video. Thank you for joining me today. And if you have already subscribed, thank you for joining me, for supporting my fam, my crafting community, my YouTube channel. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for joining me today. Bye-bye.